Hi, welcome uh, to my guide for a European War 6 1804. <clears throat> well, this game is a bit oldish, many of you are still watching my videos, and so I thought to give a hand. Starting from the home page, this is a very important button. Now I'm offline, but it's the cloud storage. So before you try a difficult mission, uh, save it game, so, because in the mission you probably would use uh, medical packs and then if you lose the mission you can just load the game again and recover what you lost okay then there are some basic things like the setting button the leaderboard the language which i will not spend time then you have four sections one is multiplayer which i will not cover and really the games are campaign conquest and challenge let's start with campaign so first you can scroll the screen there are uh, multiple campaign chapters in Am the Americas. You get uh, Dominion of Canada, Declaration of Independence, and Liberation of South America. And then in Europe, you have British Empire, French Eagle, Roman Unification. This is the last one. Holy Roman Empire, Birth of Empire, Overlord, and Ottoman Empire. When we look into the chapter, let's say Declaration of Independence. You see, you have a certain number of missions, and you can see on the right side the number of stars you have achieved. To complete a mission, let's see when you start. Okay, so if you want three stars, you must win in 16 turns. You have up to 26 to complete, at least get one star, and you receive. Uh, in every turn you start with this type of income, industry and knowledge that you can see on the top left. On the top right you see your population. If as long as you are up below the denominator, so in this case the denominator is 35, as long as you are below 35 you gain uh, income tax. So you have uh, coins that will allow you to build troops or expand building. If you go negative that number will become red and you will have negative money so keep always an eye population in the cities you can with the farm expand the population see like this and also in the city you can invest in technology sometime and so for example in this case you cannot because the city is too small you would need to upgrade the city first and then, if it's possible, in this case, you cannot upgrade the city and then increase the technology. You can add the market, they increase the coins. University, increase knowledge. With the knowledge, if you have a military academy, you can then build the knowledge to create blasts that helps break fortresses or send a spy that uh, block the fortress for counter-attacking or poison, reduce whatever garrison is protecting the city, reduce the HP. And then if you have a more advanced military tactic, the force march, which can be useful in some mission when you can steal a city with a blitz and promotion, which is mildly useful. Also, some city allow you to have the palace. In the palace, you can put the princess. The princess can amplify certain skills like temple healing, cost of buildings or uh, damage to attackers. Okay, and as usual in the mission, to win, you need to hit the targets in the red circle. And as you know, you can apply the general to um, you know, in, in strengthen the power of your units. I will do a separate general review, so we'll not dwell on the general today. Also, ah, something I wanted to show you. <coughs> so when you do the campaign, there is an autocomplete option. If you're not very good and you're stuck, one thing that you can try, set the autocomplete and the computer will play instead of you. Okay, enough, enough. You may say, okay, what's the point of that? Well, you can start uh, with that. You can uh, gain medals. 
you, coins, you can invest in training, strengthen your troops, and then you can do it again yourself. As you complete stars in a campaign method, here you see the trophies, you get the rewards. So once you achieve eight stars, which you can do it to win in two missions with three stars and one with two, for example, already, or win eight missions with one star, you start getting these coins, medals, and tulips. The tulips are to improve the skills of the princesses. But in this case, you also get a princess, Victoria, which actually is a very good Navy general. So not bad to start the first campaign with a good Navy general. And the second, you get an item, which is pretty useless. And then the third, you get a Catherine, which is another great princess. And she's very hot, by the way, as you can see. Good. And then on the top left, you see these uh, video clips with a uh, number four. Every day, four ads will appear. If you watch them, you can win coins or medical packs. Okay, medical packs are a very key element of this game because in European War 6 is extremely generous compared to other games. The World Conqueror does not have medical packs, and uh, European War 1914 is very selected. Here, instead, you can really build a stash. I have uh, over 100, and uh, you know, in some missions, really, it's, you can do without generals and still pass it. So, uh, we saw the campaigns. Incidentally, the Roman unification is the the last one is the most difficult. I finished the game, so it's everything I have is three stars. Although Support France, you can check it on my YouTube channel. It's a very challenging mission, the most difficult in the campaign mode. Then, okay, here is the tutorial you start. <clears throat> then let's look at the icons. At the, ah, the other thing I want to say is on the very top right, you can see your amount of coins that you have. I have 800,000. Because I don't use them anymore, and the amount of medals. If you want a shortcut, you click the plus, and here is all the premium stuff. You can buy the various packages, you can get the general package, you can click, and you can get 100 medals per day, coins plus one general with a, the same. I mean, not a very good one, but uh, or you can get the Wellesley package for 9.99 and 500 medals, and it's a good one. But it's an infantry, and as you know, I don't like infantry. And then you have a med medal packs; they go all the way up. So my advice: if you want to spend money, go directly for the 10,000 medal pack. You spend it once. And you save a lot of money instead of buying four times uh, the, the 3, 000, three times the 3,500, you spend $20 more. The bottom general, so these are my generals. I got, of course, the top of the top, and I will do the analysis separately. I also have three princesses recruiting. But when you click on military school, you can see all the generals available. Infantry, cavalry, artillery, and navy. And you see the, the small dots at the bottom. You can scroll, and there are many. Different color, the green, the blue, purple, and gold. There are four tiers. We we'll do the analysis. And then some generals, they have a special, like hood. You can do the challenge and get 50% discount. Then, let's look at the princesses. Also, here I will give a special chapter, separate, just here to show you. So, here are the girls. And uh, the princesses, they start with basic abilities. And if you give tulips, if you see, for example, Sophia, she has uh, already 650 points out of 1,100. With extra tulip, once I maximize the 1,100, will improve the decreased damage will go from 15% to 20% and then more tulips get to 25% Isabelle on the left you see she's maxed 
already with the 25. Now, the princesses, you can leave them like that and build them in the palace during the mission. You get the benefit which are highlighted at the bottom of the pictures. Or, like I did, you can recruit some of them as generals. For example, let's say I want to hire Isabella. I need to spend 900 medals and 120 tulips to buy her. But I wouldn't know why I would do that because she's not a very good general anyway. And indeed, I did a mistake because I hired Sophia and uh, as an artillery, but her artillery skills are not that great. 49 to, uh, after uh, the augmentation of uh, cannonballs, uh, 65 uh, battle ability. So not the great statistics, although her skills are good for artillery. But she could have been said much more useful, I think, as a princess, because the increased damage, when you have a city that is uh, uh, under heavy attack from the enemy, having a Sophia allows to reduce the damage that your uh, defense units are taking. He said, Victoria, she's a great uh, Navy general, so I hired her as a general, and I don't regret it. 60 naval ability, augmented with the compass, of course, but also great skills, especially the tactic master is very useful. And then uh, the other general I have is Lan. Although uh, she has a, a great battle ability, but not very great cavalry ability, despite some item. But the point is also that her skill decreased the price of construction building is not very useful, so I didn't have any regret. I never used them. The, the princess I use are normally aerial to decrease the price of recruiting infantry, and then the Maria all the time because it recruits, re reduced the price of cavalry by 25% when it's maxed out, and Isabella to reduce artillery. These three plus Louise to increase damage. When, uh, when, when units attack my city. So these are the four princes that I really recommend you to have, and Sophia will be good to keep. So don't hire as general. Then you have the training section. Here you can upgrade your units. Focus as usual. First, maximize uh, uh, cavalry and artillery. These are the most important units. There are three sections in every unit in cavalry. You see, for every session only applies for certain types of cavalry. So you can maximize attack, defense, and HP, but these apply only to light cavalry, Hungarian Hussar, Dead's Head Hussar, Musket Cavalry, and Horse Grenadier Guard. These are very rare units. Don't spend too much money there at the beginning. Instead, go to the second section. Then you get the Lancer, which is a very common unit, and the Heavy Cavalry. These are the two that you will use most of the time. You also may use a Cossack and Mamrock Cavalry and Tank, so, <clears throat> which Tank in 1804, there is an historical uh, paradox there. Still, spend there. This is where it's very useful to, to spend money, to advance. And then mobility applies to everyone and also population reduction applies to everyone. So, as a rule of thumb, I minimize my investment in the first block, and I focus on the second and third. Same for uh, artillery. The first block has a light artillery, a rocket, although these are more common than in the example of the cavalry, so it's okay to expand it. But, of course, in the second group, that's where you have the heavy cavalry and the siege, and the field and crop a cannon or group, so here are more commonly used, so you should prioritize the second section. And the third, of course, mobility and population are really important. Okay, then, uh, again, maximize cavalry and artillery. For Navy, particularly mobility is important, you see, I finished the game and I never upgraded the, um, the first uh, block because it's clipper, corvette, privateer, and a so I can do it now. I you increase the attack, but I rarely use these units. He said I, the second is the frigate, the ship of the line, and ironclad. These are the three units you would use, and those are maximized. 
Um, I'm not a big in the forts or trenches. As you see, I didn't upgrade them. So I rarely use them. And the infantry, the same. The first group, here it said it's the opposite for infantry. The first section is the one you should prioritize because militia is what you should always build to protect the city because it's low cost, low consumption population, and it's good enough. But also grenadier, the all guard, and all guard and elite uh, infantry is what you will be using. The second section has uh, units which are very uncommon, and so you should not prioritize. And the third is mobility. Last section, the items. So in the items, you see I have 94 medical packs because of, I've been watching a lot of ads, I guess, and because I finished the game, I have lots of things I don't need. And uh, all the items are given to the generals because the items are limited. Like you can only get two ambulances, for example. And uh, the shop refresh every five minutes. Of course, uh, one trick is that you can close the game, reopen it, and reset the clock. So sometimes when you're looking to buy some special items, it's worth it. As a rule of thumb, um, avoid items get the increased percentage, like the Royal Scepter, and uh, try to get items that have at least an addition of uh, 15 points. Okay? So increase HP 15% useless. Increase another ability 10 points is on the low side. So you should get first the one, these 5 points that don't bother, but the, the 15, 20, 25 points, these are the, the good ones. Try to get them. We can see quickly some of these items. For example, the ambulance, restore HP 30 points per round. Although if you have a lot of medical packs, the ambulance becomes less important. And this is said is the flintlock pistol, is the best increased cavalry by 30 points. And battle ability 10. So this is great, very rare. Or for Napoleon, I have uh, the same. Uh, Increase the artillery telescope, 25 points additional and 10 battle. In a EW6, 108, 18.04, uh, they are quite stingy in the items. In uh, the other, uh, in 1914, you have much more uh, duplicate items of the same. So anyway, in the shop, you can buy items. You can buy tulips for the princesses. You can buy medals to increase the title of the generals and a badge to exchange metals. I will show you how you can sell the item. When you sell them, you sell them at a loss, remember. So that concludes the campaign section. And then we go in Conquest, it's very similar. <clears throat> you have the same bottom icons. Still, you see the Conquest achievements here. Every time you complete an achievement, you unlock stuff, medals, uh, coins, get it legal. But you need to be good, so you need to get at least an A rank. Okay, so here are the medals. If you have badges, you can trade them. So I have, for example, I am a short. I can go to the shop. I don't have a medal to buy, otherwise, I could have bought this, this badge to show you live. I could have done a trade-in with some short in uh, silver coins. And these are the medals that they purchase by trading in the badges. And they are actually good. Uh, sailor plus one, cavalry plus one, infantry plus one. They are good medals. Here, it recaps all the campaigns. He had done it in 2019, uh, before this bastard of a virus. And I've done all my conquests with the S, A, and the likes. And here you have the four type of conquests. And you can choose you will be the which party you, you will do. And if you click on the on the trophy again you see the achievement of what you're missing. And then you can select a faction, for example, you see which and how many stars. Say so Denmark is the two stars and you uh, you try. You should try to complete the conquest with the old uh, three, two, and one star to maximize the achievements. And also, conquest is a good one to do with auto complete on because they're very long, 
and uh, without a complete, you should be able to do this. The first one, at least, you should win it and start unlocking those medals. Last is the challenge. Okay, in the challenge, we have two things. We have the cities. When you click on, uh, say, Mexico City, in the city, when you see these uh, paper rolls, these parchments, you have three slots for generals. In this case, for example, this mission, you need to achieve 93 units of uh, artillery, 9 units of counterattack skill, and 40 of title. Okay, so I'll put, for example, Napoleon, which is a key artillery. I already got 85, and also Napoleon is counterattack, so I got 6 units of counter and 28 of title. Then I need another uh, artillery. I put Kuznetsov, and he has already completed artillery and title, but it does not have counter-attack. And then, if you know your generals, I don't know them very well, to be honest, I don't remember all the skills they have. Counter-attack. See, Blucher has a counter-attack, if I put it, I also get that. If you check all three objectives, then your reward increases. In this case, I go to 5,000 coins, and so I, I get it. Okay, you have multiple, so if you can load them all with your general, that's how you build your resources, which later on you can invest in the shop or in training. So do that, watch the other, do this every day. A good tactic is to don't start the game, but for the first couple of weeks, just watch the other build the resources. And then so that when you start the game, you start with already a good level of training. And then you have uh, six... Uh, challenge chapters so we have uh, the Spanish war which is the second most difficult one French uh, revolutionary war it is the Spanish war every mission has uh, roughly 10 uh, missions inside to do and then we have uh, 100 ways <clears throat> 100 days a Prussian expedition to Egypt and the most tough of the game and the best you can check my playlist, The Crimean War. They are fantastic campaign, particularly this one, Siege. Siege is a very tough mission to watch. And the other one, which is very tough, is the Battle of Balaclava. Simply because you cannot use cavalry generals. It's like me telling me to run without legs because I'm a cavalry uh, gamer. I play with cavalry. And then the fall of Sevastopol. I, I did a three star, but this one you have to watch. It's amazing. Look at that. You start with these massive troops. You need to protect Sevastopol and look at your enemy. Isn't it cool? And look at the number of turns. You have 99 turns. <laughs> However, I finished it in less than 99 because if you destroy them all, then the game is over. And during the game, you see this pyramid on the bottom left. Sometimes you have a wonder. And so if you click on it, for that turn, you get, a, you don't have, for example, the wonder gives you a morale boost. You don't lose it. And then you have to wait six turns for the wonder to cool. See, the wonder is there. Information. And there you go. Okay, I think I told you a lot. Have fun, this game is great, I really enjoyed it. And that's why I keep coming back and play some missions. On the channel, I think I have, uh, I mean, I have all the missions, all. Pick one, it's there. I forgot to mention here, there are the four general. These are quite simple missions, six to get them with the discount. The first three, four are quite very easy. So you can do this and get them with the half of the discount. And then if you manage to get all the end, you can get up to 50% discount. Bagration is a great cavalry, so I got him. And then so you have John. John is a artillery. I didn't get it, although I finished the, the missions. Then you have Lan is an infantry. You know my thoughts. And Hood, navy. 50, that's a decent navy. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, watch my campaigns 
and uh, I hope they will help you progress and finish the game. Finishing the game is a great satisfaction. You should try to do it. Take care.